a different greenness, for example, from the pine forests and wet, like you can pick up a wetland using these images. I did that for a winter image and a summer image, uh, for winter and summer, and I divided the image that I, divided, the, I, um, I subtracted the images from one another. So, for example, if you take the, gr the greenness uh, 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 index from previously and you do, uh, subtract the summer from the winter image, you get a, a deciduousness index. It's essentially so you can really pick up waste pine trees that's evergreen versus uh, um, riparian forest with a lot of oak trees, which is like <coughs> which going to lose its leaves. The second class of variables that I use is the rain variables. Essentially, this is also available. Uh, this was an SRTM satellite from also from NASA and. Or once again available for free at the 30 meter interval for uh, uh, grid for South uh, for the state everywhere and um, what you use is you essentially your base layer is elevation layer where here you can see lighter areas is higher lower areas is darker and you can really see these streams in it which is going to be the lower areas now obviously you have like you have entire for your entire landscape is a 30 meter grid so if you have like two grids next to each other you can if you know where the sun is from you can figure out radiation you can figure out slope depending on how far these images or these grid out what's the difference between these two grids and aspect also of like just knowing what's the orientation from the one uh, grid to the another one and these are like um, some of them you can figure out is important for the butterfly but I just added a lot of them in because I feel sometimes my eyes can't see what the butterfly always likes. I don't want to really interpret uh, interpret the data a priori. I wanted to see what the data sho shows me to figure out what we what we don't know. And then the th third thing, which is also really cool, is calculating vegetation structure. Essentially, if you think of a butterfly, they're not going to be able. They we know they don't like open areas. But they're also not going to be fly. They're not going to be fly, able to fly in really encroached areas. And there's also remote sensing tools to do this. And normally you do this with a plane. And what the plane does is it shoots down. It's called lidar, and it shoots down. And uh, it's uh, light detection and ranging. So it shoots down the lidar uh, light beam, and it reflects back the light beam. And using these points, you can figure out. You can get an idea of the distance, how long it takes for that um, light to come back, you can figure out how that you can pick up the structure of the habitat. And to give you an idea, here's a image, like you remember previously, I showed you the uh, the Landsat images. This is just a hyperspectral image, which is just, instead of the 30 meter, this is a really small, uh, 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 fine resolution, one meter scale, to give you just reflectance and then a lot combined with a LiDAR image to, of the Amazon to just really give you an idea of this is just so this is points combined with that uh, li light image that I the um, Landsat image kind of a spectral image that I showed you before to give you that right to give you an image like that and then um, So here's another image of um, this is just Manhattan with uh, with a light of uh, fog, like you can read, and the color here is just the ele elevation. Like you can, like the higher the area is, the more the grayer the um, elevation. So you can play with this pretty well, and um, even Hollywood started to to play with lidar. So that's the entire with that light that you shoot back and you and, and you receive it back. Um, where like the um, music uh, uh, artists now started to also use this lidar images to just mark and make the images. So you can see there's a little bit of noise, but you can get a better idea of what's going on here. So um, in, uh, obviously, it's all good and well to have this totally awesome image of uh, of the landscape in three three dimensions, but um, yeah like it's like you need to figure out like it's all nice to see it but you got to be able to figure out how to analyze that data also which is sometimes different and what I've done here to analyze this data is I I did, divided these um, the three-dimensional data up in different chunks two to five meters above uh, ground level five to ten meters above ground level 10 to 20 meters above ground level and higher than 20 meters above ground level 
and for each of these different levels I calculated the amount of returns that you get for each of these different blocks and um, the lighter areas would mean um, would, uh, would mean um, uh, less dense uh, areas or more dense and lighter darker areas would mean less dense and you can kind of like as you go up you can start seeing the less dense areas which is the um, which is the um, air, the um, drop zones for the parachutes on Fort Bragg while like you can see like obviously these are um, the river streams also so you can get an idea like once you get to 20 there's only really these riparian zones have some trees high uh, 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 some structure above 20 meters so um, what do, so looking at, so what you do afterwards is like a, like you can stack all these bands together you can dr take a point for a butterfly and you can drill down to see what the kind of habitat the butterfly likes <coughs> and uh, here's an idea this is the probability of the butterfly occurring versus this is the um, the essentially the data value and this is deciduousness uh, which explains 41 percent of the butterfly and you can essentially see this would be areas that not doesn't that won't change at all through the year and this is a huge difference in the areas for, throughout the year there's not a lot on Fort Bragg but you can see years where you would start with oak forest and years like areas that don't change would be evergreen forest which would be the pine trees and you can see the butterflies kind of like like uh, you kind of uh, would like areas with kind of a mix between evergreen and deciduous uh, uh, forest and you can really like the blue is just like variation and like in this spot 40 which is just an index there's about the 80 percent probability that you'll see a butterfly there and then slope which is essentially this is just shows like this just quantifies well for you what the, what the butterflies like it's they like flat areas like with no slope which is going to be streams and then as you move away this would be areas like for example on the side of streams where there's a little bit of slope but you can get an idea of like the butterflies just there's areas that the butterflies just don't like areas with um, with a lot of slope and vegetation density above 20 meters explained 8% of the distribution are these butterflies and you can get a real good idea the butterflies essentially occur in areas with like where the they don't like forest which would be the areas with uh, light up 20 meters and up so um, this is the habitat map of the St. Francis Island for Fort Bragg obviously so what happens <coughs> is we know where the butterflies are but with a snapshot in time you can also figure out where the butterflies might occur, might, uh, might occur but where we haven't been uh, have, where, which we haven't visited this is like the impact areas of Fort Bragg. So this middle area is where they test their bombs out and if you drive around Fort Bragg you just hear the whole time boom 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 it sounds like thunderstorms. So you like all, often wonder like man I wonder how accurate this uh, <laughs> this equi equipment would be. So um, and like I think I've seen like two areas where there's like kind of dodgy like holes in the ground <laughs> which is outside the impact zones. It's like yeah. <laughs> so it's also quite fun you when they start shoot off the satellite you get like a weird like I was with somebody from the military in my car was uh, at one day and just I heard this weird <laughs> kind of noise. What was that? It's like, that's a missile that they just fired off. So but anyway <coughs> so the interesting thing is they do this in the middle area and in this middle area we like for obvious reasons we don't have free access in there we can like they just we don't have much access in there and um, this is also an area where we really thought a lot of butterflies would be because there's 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 a beaver activity because like people just probably can't go in there and also more importantly there's a lot of fire so um, because of all these bombs going off making fire so um, like these the butterfly habitat even if there's no beaver beaver there the, the habitat may be maintained by all these areas so uh, obviously you can just get an idea red would be high uh, suitability blue would be low suitability and you can see there's not a lot of uh, red like oh, you almost don't see the red in that habitat map um, so even in the areas like in full rack where the butterflies would occur you just yeah, you guys can look <laughs> you don't, you won't see anything here 
But um, so, like, obviously.